My kids love pushing my buttons. Let me explain. This is a Xiaomi Akara smart button. When I hold it down, magic things happen. You see the light has completely changed in the room. It's completely changed the atmosphere. It completely changes the dynamic. If I hold it down again, you'll see the lighting becomes much, much nicer, much more pleasant. The reason that I've got this set up is because if I'm on a video call, I want to make sure that I look good for the camera. Um, or if I'm recording a YouTube video, I want to make sure I look good for the camera as well. Uh, but if, if I'm working, I want the most comfortable lighting conditions for looking forwards, which is generally this state here. So there's a few things that's going on here. When I change it, there is an LED strip on the ceiling. There's an LED strip behind the Kallax box here. There's an LED strip over in the corner there. There's a desk light and there's a light up here as well. So if you keep an eye on all of those spaces when it changes, you can really see the difference that the lighting makes to a room. So today we're gonna to talk about how you can optimize the lighting for your room to get the best out of it. So pushing buttons is great. Interrupting me, even better. Let me, let me show you what my office button does. Just gonna reset the lights back to a nice color for recording. There's absolutely no way that I'm missing that interruption. One of the things that we've got set up in the conservatory is a lot of similar kind of atmospheric lighting. So that's gonna be the focus of today's video. So when I come into the conservatory, there's a few different lights that turn on, including this LED strip. It's all controlled by a motion sensor. And I also have this LED strip that runs the entire length of the conservatory all the way along. Um, it's about seven meters and it provides an awful lot of light into the conservatory. So when I flip the button on, uh, it really changes what the atmosphere is in the conservatory. And this is really important for things like if we're playing pool, uh, we can actually see the colors of the balls correctly, which, which can be a bit of a problem. So this is a little bit of wall art that we created. It's a WLED controller connected up to an LED rope light. I think it's a WS2812B. I'll have a link down in the description where you can pick one up pretty cheap from AliExpress. And the way that it's connected to the wall is to use a tempered glass blackboard that's magnetic on the back and we picked up some small magnets. Again, I'll link down in the description where you can pick some of those up and then glued them onto something that I 3D printed. Uh, I modeled and 3D printed something that would create quite a good clip around the rope. I'll link down to that in the description as well. And that's just what keeps it on the wall. Um, the benefit of doing this is really cool. You can you can pull it off, change it into whatever shapes you want, and uh, leave it leave it set for some funky wall art. To keep things tidy, I made a box as well, so we could put the WLED controller in that. I printed it in a black PLA just so it would blend in a bit to the uh, to the board. One of the things I absolutely love about these controllers is that you can just push the wires in super easy and you don't have to worry about soldering. One of the things that I don't love about these controllers is they seem to be a bit flaky depending on the GPIO port that you use. I've had the best luck using GPIO 2. I've had a couple of weird resets with GPIO 5, so definitely plug it into GPIO port 2. I think the light sources work really well together in this room. I'm really happy with how it's come together. That's it for this video. If you liked it, hit like, subscribe, that would be much appreciated. I'm still figuring out the kind of content I want to create as well. So I don't know whether I'm gonna go more towards the ideas side of things, sharing funky videos, editing, or whether I'm gonna go more towards the technical side of things, diving into Home Assistant, looking at YAML configurations and stuff like that. If there's any type of content you'd like me to create, leave a comment down below. I'll make sure I read all of the comments and that will probably steer the direction of the content I create for this channel.